Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to be identifying line symmetry. We are in our math journal on page 61, unit 2, lesson 12, but as you can see, I have also included some other pages in this uh, whiteboard tutorial. If you are in class live with a teacher in a brick and mortar school this year, uh, your teacher will provide you uh, paper copies of these sheets that you see. Uh, if you're a virtual student, on the other hand, like my math students are in the fall of 2020, uh, we're doing this all online and, and digitally, so you can either download the PDF at home if you have a printer, or you can just follow along on the screen. So the first task as has us uh, looking at Math Masters page 84. Uh, it says, cut out the drawings, fold them to find lines of symmetry, and then record your answers to the right. Well, this sheet is Math Master page 84. And as you can see, we have a leaf, a football, a turtle, and a bow tie. Now, if I draw a vertical uh, line of symmetry uh, for the leaf, like so, you can see that the left-hand side of my shape is a mirror image of the right. See, it starts out pointing at the top, widens as it gets towards the bottom of the uh, box, and then that, at the very end, narrows real sharply to make that stem, okay? So my left-hand side is a mirror image of my right-hand side, okay? However, if I tried to do the same thing horizontally, that's side to side, uh, you're gonna notice that the top part, like right here, where we have uh, the point does not look like the bottom part where we have the stem, which is flat. That means that these are not symmetrical uh, top to bottom, okay? So let's get rid of that here, here, and here, okay? So when we look at this table right here, let's adjust that so it's somewhat level. I would just put that it has one line of symmetry right there. Now, if I inspect the football on the other hand, I can also see that I can create a vertical line of symmetry because both sides, left and right, are symmetrical. But then, when I cut it across horizontally, I also have uh, some mirror images top to bottom because as you can see, at the top, we start out with the pointy side here, and it widens to you get to the middle, okay? And then down at the bottom half, it, it starts out wide, and then it narrows to a point. And this, too, gives us a mirror image reflection of what's going on at the top of this shape. So this actually has two lines of symmetry, uh, so that's what I'd write right here, okay? Oops, let's try that again. Here we go. All right, so now let's take a look at the polygons, which are Math Masters pages 85 and 86. We have a series of two-dimensional shapes, A through E and then F through J, okay? And again, the same question occurs. Uh, how many lines of symmetry can we get out of each shape, okay? So, for example, shape number A. That is an equilateral triangle. Now, the word equilateral means that each side and each angle are the same as the other. So, when I say equilateral, this side here compared to this side here compared to this side here are the same length, which means that this angle here is the same measurement as this angle here, as this one here. They're all 60 degrees. So that means that if I split this triangle down the middle, from top to bottom, from the top of this vertex to the middle of this, uh, middle of this base uh, line segment, I would create two mirror images. It would create two right angle scalene triangles. Now then, if we take this shape 
like so. And I move it over here. And if I turn the shape 120 degrees, okay, and I line it up alongside the shape here, you're going to notice that with the color backgrounds, or the color uh, sides I've created, uh, my yellow is now on the right-hand side, where before it was on the left. And I can create a line asymmetry, again, that goes from the top of the vertex to the middle of the base, okay, like so. Again, I'm drawing this freehand, so you'll have to forgive me a little bit. But as you can see, the line of symmetry that I created here at this point is now the same line of symmetry that I had to begin with. Okay, and if I flip that triangle over again a third time, another hundred. Uh, this time, another hundred and twenty degrees, so that my green side of my triangle is on the right and my red side is on the left. Again, if I draw a, another line of symmetry from the top of the vertex down to the middle of the, the base line segment right there, uh, I've created a third line of symmetry. So again, if I take that shape and I turn it 120 degrees one way or the other, I'm going to get the same shape uh, or the same uh, symmetrical sides as I do from every which way, okay? So this means that this shape right here has, uh, hold on a second, move that down, there we go. Now this shape right here now uh, has three lines of symmetry because I can cut it symmetrically from three different positions. Okay, so that's what I'd write right here, three. Okay? And that's what I would do for each of these shapes. I would look at these shapes, the polygons, A through J, and ask myself, how many different ways can I cut these shapes? Some shapes are only going to have one uh, possible line of symmetry, like this triangle B. There's only one way I could cut this triangle in half, and that's like this. Okay, to create two right-angled uh, triangles. Okay, there are some shapes, on the other hand, that have no lines of symmetry. Take, for example, this uh, per, uh, parallelogram uh, polygon F. If I draw a vertical line of symmetry like so, okay, uh, you're going to notice that on the left-hand side here, uh, there the uh, corner or the vertex is farther to the left than the one on the bottom. But over here on the right hand side it's the bottom corner that's farther right than the top corner here or vertex. Okay, So this isn't a line of symmetry. Okay, Because if I were to fold this parallelogram in half this point right here would stick out past this corner or vertex over here, and vice versa, okay? I could do the same thing, drawing a line of symmetry across, and I have the same imbalance. They are not mirror images. So for letter F, it has no lines of symmetry. Sometimes you can have no lines of symmetry in a shape, and that's okay. We are just looking for characteristics of these polygons, okay? So letter A has three or multiple uh, polygon B just has the one, and then shapes like polygon F have none. Okay? So give these uh, uh, shapes a try. Try to figure out the lines of symmetry. Do they just have one line? Are there multiple lines? Or are there no lines? Because the shape does not have any mirror uh, sides or mirror-like images that you can cut with a line of symmetry. If you have questions about this activity, please reach out to your math teacher. Uh, otherwise, we will talk again soon, friends. Thanks.